Welcome back everyone. I hope you had a wonderful half term break with your friends, your families and have enjoyed the wonderful weather we've had. Uh, I'm sure it's been rainy, sunny, typical English weather that we have in October. Um, anyway, I'd like to start this term by reflecting back on the 35 days of the previous term that we had. 35 days doesn't sound like a lot of time, but I tell you what, the amount of things that we had going on around the trust in all our schools during those days was absolutely remarkable and incredible. So I'd like to share and reflect on some of those things with you now. So going all the way back to the start of September, we had two amazing training days where you spent a lot of time in your schools working together, upskilling yourselves, sharing ideas, but also most importantly, we had a very, very serious but important message that we shared to raise awareness around suicide. Unfortunately, as we know, tragic events that have happened in our schools previously, we have to build upon these and we have to try and take something positive from a very difficult situation. Um, I'm delighted to say that that campaign, which of course has been ably led by Matt Coleman and supported by Kelly's Heroes, we've all supported, we've all taken forward just to keep raising that awareness so that we keep the young people at the heart of everything we do. Thank you to all the schools for the money raised for Kelly's Heroes, uh, just over £2,000, which is a remarkable achievement, and I'm sure the charity are delighted to know that all of us have made those efforts to support them. We haven't stopped with the efforts we're making. We've been writing to local MPs, we've been writing to the Secretary of State for Education, because we fully believe that every teacher and every person that works with young children should have that awareness raised of suicide and the important signs they can look out for when they're working with important young people. Next, I'd really like to highlight to all of you the most important aspect of what we do, which is about improving our schools. Of course, we have all of you as the staff team that work in our schools, the teachers, the support staff, all of the other people that help our schools to tick. But we're very fortunate that we have a highly skilled and effective school improvement team, led by Matt Coleman. Um, that team get into our schools to give the bespoke support that is needed so that we can ensure our schools move forward. In particular, over the last 35 days, one of the methods that's been used is something we call appreciative inquiry. That's where our colleagues from other schools, so leaders from other schools, will come together, visit another one of the schools with a particular focus on a couple of areas. Usually an area of strength and usually an area that we're looking to improve on further. So we can use all that skill we've got from all of the knowledge and the people working within our schools to benefit the other schools too. That has been really impactful uh, and I know those leaders that have had the pri privilege and pleasure to visit other schools have also taken things back to their own school as well. So that's a massive step forward. Of course, when Ofsted come knocking on the door, as we've just had in one of our schools at Park Infants, literally the, in the two or three days before the end of the last half term, we're ready then. We know our schools really well and I have that confidence that when Matt and the school improvement team and the principals are talking to me about their schools, we are precise and we know exactly where those schools are. So when Ofsted come, all it is is a validation of what we already know. And without being able to divulge all the information about the Park Infants Ofsted, we're delighted with the findings and we're looking forward to sharing the positive news that will come out of that report very shortly. We're all going to move forward with school improvement. We've been talking about a focus on how we use assessment information intelligently to impact on the children's learning. Um, and that is a focus for all of our schools this year. So the work that's going to happen in schools to look at how do we use assessment information, how do we adapt the sequence of learning, how do we respond to the needs that are in front of us directly at the start of a lesson or in a lesson, they're all the things that we can see happening in our schools now. And the one thing that's going to do is make that journey for the learning get better and better and better. So the real strength of us as a trust is how we come together to focus on the right things that move that learning forward to improve our schools. And seeing that opportunity, seeing how people can work and collaborate is something we should all be extremely proud of. If I can take you all back to my uh, presentation to you at the start of September and my pyramid iceberg, if you all recall that, um, those parts of the iceberg which are beneath the surface of the water that you don't necessarily see, well actually some of them have been very busy over the last 35 days. Um, in terms of audits, which happens every year, we have external auditors come in they're looking at all the processes around finance and compliance and they're actually currently working on their final report to tell us whether everything's gone as planned or whether there's some areas for us to learn from. Well, the headlines and the initial indications are that things have gone very well over the last 12 months. Um, we're looking in a far stronger financial position as well, which is 
testament to the way the whole team came together over the last 12 months to really pull that through. Um, and these things happen in the background that most of you would not be aware of, but these things give us the solid foundations to be able to spend our time on the school improvement, on the experiences the young people get, and as well as giving you guys the opportunity for your own training and development. So these important things that happen in the background, as I've said to you all before, I see, I'm privileged to see, work with colleagues that are working in these areas, but it's really important to all of us to understand that these actually underpin so much of what we do and give us the freedom to think about other more creative and proactive areas. Likewise, in Estates, uh, at the end of August into September, we had building condition surveys conducted across all our schools. Uh, and Malcolm Johnson, as the Director of Operations, is currently working with the teams to piece together that programme of what projects need doing over the next 12, 18 to 24 months to keep our facilities as good as they can be. It's a challenge. Um, we only receive £80,000 a year for eight schools directly from the government to make improvements to our facilities. It's nowhere near enough. So we have to go through a process of putting bids in to get more money. And that's what Malcolm's working on at the moment. I'm also delighted to introduce to you all, uh, and I'm sure you'll meet her in the near future, our new Chief Finance Officer, a lady called Laura Kerrison, who starts with us uh, as we return from half term today. The last 35 days have been incredibly busy in the world of training and development. Um, we are fortunate that we work in collaboration with the Northamptonshire Teaching School Hub, um, but we also drive forward various programmes ourselves which benefit not just the people that work in our schools but actually that wider purpose of benefiting education in general, developing people that work in schools so that the young people, more than the 3,000 young people we've got, actually get an improved offer. So from whether it ranges from the Early Careers Teacher Framework programmes which are the programmes for teachers or the mentors through to MPQs or our apprenticeship programme, um, all of those are adding value and what I'm proud of is that colleagues from our schools help facilitate and deliver those programmes. So we're giving that back to other people. It's absolutely something that's in our, our core purpose and our strategic plan that actually what happens in our trust we can share with other people as well. Uh, thank you for those of you which have also attended the professional learning community meetings. There's been some really vibrant meetings that I've seen happening in the last term. But the training room, the room I'm sat in right now, has been full, it's been busy, and it's been a really, really positive start to the term. So thanks to Vic Brennan for coordinating all of that and for all of the people which have taken the time to deliver some of those programmes, join in with the programmes and add that value back to their own development. But the impact that's going to have now on our schools and on education can only be something that's going to be positive. I keep coming back to the fact that 35 days isn't a very long period of time. Um, when I think about all of the things that you've been doing out in our schools, it is quite remarkable. And I'm not going to sit here now and name every single thing that's happened. But if I think it through, uh, there's been such a range of activities and events going on in the schools from uh, open days to harvest festivals to visits to the church. We've had people going to Peterborough Cathedral. We've had music events. We've had sporting fixtures. That school calendar, all of those opportunities we give the young people is absolutely incredible. Uh, it doesn't come without hard work, without time, without effort, without coordination, without energy. Um, they're the things that those young people are gonna remember when they come back. Many years, they're looking back and they go, do you remember when we went here? Do you remember when we took part in that event that's going on? Um, so thank you for all of the things you do to give those young people those wider experiences, which of course, are going to be adding value to their development, their character, their experiences as we go forward. Um, I know that it's been a pleasure to visit some of those events, uh, attend some of the open days and really stand there and feel extremely proud of the offer that we're giving to all the young people in our schools. So keep it up, I know it's hard work, but thank you for everything you're doing. We all have moments over the last few weeks when we reflect back, where we think there was a pivotal moment for us that probably was a challenge we had to get through or something that really inspired us. I want to tell you about a moment that really inspired me um, only a couple of weeks ago. So I was fortunate enough to attend the Confederation of Schools Trust conference uh, and on the second day Floella Benjamin, that for people of a similar age to me would know very much very well who she is, um, she was present, presenting and giving a really inspirational speech to all of the attendees at the conference. What it did for me, her speech told us about her life, the adversity she'd gone through to obviously come, come to England, the work she's done, 
uh, as a TV presenter and many other activities she's done, but also as a campaigner for the rights of children. She campaigned to have the very first Minister for Children and has done many things which actually, all the way through, the thread is what's right for children. It made me stop, it made me think, it made me reflect. And actually, that's what we do. That's why we do what we do. Because everything we do is about the young people that we work with. And she's been there in the public figure to campaign for the rights of children and has benefited them in many, many ways. But actually stopping, listening to her story and knowing that actually that connection that she may have to thousands and thousands of people that were children, which are now of a similar age to me, that she created has given some of them the safety net they needed, the confidence they needed to actually get through their life. And when I think back to the, the presentation at the start of term and we spoke about really seeing each other through the busyness of the storm, actually it comes back to that again. Someone's always got to be there for someone else and be positive and be able to guide them through. So keeping that at the centre of what we do, realising that what we're doing for each other will benefit the young people we work with and keeping them at the heart of what we do. So if you ever get a chance to uh, hear her speak or read one of her books, it's well worth doing because just to give you that inspiration, that reminder of why what we do is so, so important. Finally, and building upon those comments about Floella Benjamin, what do I see happening in our organisation, in our schools, from our leaders? I see leaders that lead with empathy, with humanity, with consideration and kindness. That's the culture that we want in our schools. That's the culture we want our young people to see and feel. So thank you to the leaders which do that. Thank you to all of you which create that culture too. It's very much the approach that is right, the one which is going to develop character and give success to the young people we work with, but also with each other too. So have a fantastic next few weeks of the next half term and I look forward to seeing you all again soon.